<laughs> what is good? We are back for another episode of a fresh That's what? A fresh crack in an FF Dynasty. What's good, Jay Wayne? How you doing? <laughs> Slurping some seltzer. Some revelry seltz. I know you hate that, so. A slurp? The slurp. Mm. I bet the listeners do too. I don't I'm know. sure they do. <laughs> yes. So, uh, got Jay Wayne over here. Obviously, no big co. Bye bye. Um, got the bipod action tonight. We're going to be tripoding it tomorrow for the uh, live redraft uh, mock draft that we're doing. I uh, do those every Thursday. We're rapidly approaching not doing those anymore. So if you haven't been getting involved, get involved. You can subscribe and get the live notification right to your thing. You can holler at us on Twitter. We usually post uh, at the FF Dynasty whether or not you know we're gonna uh, we need to fill this thing up. Give you usually leave a spot or two to see if somebody will do that. Um, but you know we just talked about some cheap uh, groupings, positional groupings that you can get. Real quick, I don't know if it'll be tomorrow when you see this video. This video might come out after that, well, then that next week. Uh, mock. But definitely week. all that stuff, sign up and, and yeah. be ready. Next week you can get in the mock. Yeah. Um, so we did cheap positional groups now. Now we're going to just do uh, some cheaper ADP guys here. Cheap money. Whether it was a startup or guys to target in a trade here. Uh, we just finished up an FFPC startup. So some of these guys were involved in that. And then some of these guys are way deeper than an FFPC you would want to roll with. Um, but it's basically just, you know, guys who we feel are cheap money. We're bringing it back old school or, or just, you it's know. Cheap money, man. Just good trade cheap targets here to uh, pretend or left for dead. Maybe should be a little higher, all those kind of things. And we're going to mix in some veterans and some second year and third year guys. And then we're going to give you, you know, some rookies that we like there at the end. Um, so and these are basically all outside the top 180p. Uh, the first two guys are not. Um, but I feel like they're probably still pretty good values, you know, so they're high 90s. There's other great values in in throughout that area. Um, but these were just some of the cheaper guys. Uh, so we want to give you a chat for those that obviously you're probably not so much in a startup right now, or maybe you're finishing them up. So maybe this will help you out. But these are guys that you could be, we're just showing you that the value is lower on these guys. So right. you could go trade for them as well. You could trade for them. And as we get deeper into these lists, you could pick them up off the waiver wire. All right. So number one, first guy off the rip, Dynasty ADP on DLF at 97 is Brandon Cooks. Yeah. Texans, uh, yeah, he's left for dead in just about every draft we do, redraft or not. I mean, I get it. Nobody likes the Texans right now. They're terrible. Could be one of the worst teams in football. But at the end of the day, look, Watson may or may not be playing. Nobody knows what the hell is going to happen there. I'm not even going to try to speculate. But if they, they picked up Tyrod as a, as a nice insurance policy for this team, and they did something right there because the guy – can play. I mean, he's not going to, he's not going to, he's not Deshaun Watson by any means, but no. he can facilitate an offense and, and, you know, have a, a relevant fantasy wide receiver and Brandon cooks can be that dude. I mean, this is, this has been a hundred plus target guy, a thousand yard plus receiver for all but two years of his career. One of those years was the rookie year. And the other year was that weird year in LA, uh, pre-trade where he just wasn't used very much was, was probably a little banged up, nicked up. Uh, but this guy, has been nothing short of very strong for your fantasy team uh, year in, year out. And Tyrod should probably be locked into a lot of Brandon Cook and should just see a decent volume of targets. And, and that's usually the name of the game. And when you can put uh, opportunity with talent, you know, yeah, he's probably not going to get quite the the best opportunity like he would get with Deshaun Watson, but he's going to get some opportunity here. And Tyrod can extend plays. Cooks can get past the defender. So. Sure. And they're going to be behind, so they're going to be throwing it. There's another little argument for Whoa. how bad the offense's team is going to be. But, uh, yeah, it's not sexy. I mean, Brandon Cooks is kind of – I mean, he used to be real sexy. Mm -hmm. And he. it's not like he's played bad. He just, just oh. is just in this weird spot this year. And it, looking at that week one Texans game, like Tyrod was out there slinging it around. I mean, and he should have – he had the job in L.A. Yeah. Uh, but – then someone, a trainer, really wanted Herbert in there, so they <laughs> punctured his lung before the first game. Tyrod's such a good guy, he just let it slide. And that was it. He listened to Chris Rock, when somebody punctures your lung, <laughs> let it slide. <laughs> so, I, 
he looked I mean they, they pulled him out after like the first series because they were like all right we saw enough let's get him out of there he's looks like the starter I mean I can't yeah. imagine I don't want to speculate either but I can't imagine yeah. that, that Watson plays because they don't want him to get hurt because they can still trade him if this legal thing clears up but right. so I can't see him playing for the Texans it's got to be Tyrod's job or Tyrod yeah, and and I mean he can facilitate like they, you they, said. They so like the, the Brandon Cooks, they grabbed a cheap rookie and and Mills who looked capable, and then you know they traded for Anthony Miller. Now he's banged up, um, and Nico Collins is is a rookie, a uh, big bodied guy, so different than uh, what Nico Collins Nico flashed Collins a little bit, and, and Conley was getting peppered. Conley, a little little sparky kind of freaky guy, and then Kiki QT still over there. He made mm-hmm. some plays, so but. Cook should be the, the heavy dominant sure. target guy. I like so it. Anyway, so Darnell Mooney's the next guy. He's the only other guy outside the top 100. He's one spot next behind uh, Brandon Cooks, according to DLF ADP, which is what we're going off here. And look, there is no other competition, and Mooney looked like he could get open versus uh, NFL corners and looked very quick, very decisive, uh, pretty strong player here. So I like the ADP for Mooney. Seems like good value. Um, and... I think Dalton and Justin Fields are the best quarterback situation they've had there in a long time, um, and and he should be second in pecking order for targets. Showed showed well in his rookie wise. season. Probably haven't we probably haven't hyped him up enough uh, right. this off season. So I like, and, but he's still cheap. Cheap. So I like it. All right. So Logan Thomas, a guy that we we all all loved. We we got him on squads. He helped you out last year. Logan Thomas at one oh five is a strong value. So you know, go ahead and subscribe because we got a Logan Thomas Robert Tunyon uh, video here coming up very shortly. So make sure you get that. We'll go into a little more detail, but we're gonna keep it moving on Logan. Did I already hit the subby button in this video? I don't I don't know know if you did or didn't. You can hit it. Go for it. Why not? You can hit it three times. Who cares? I must have hit it because we're there. Mm. All right. So next guy on the board, Hollywood Brown at 113. Uh, we've I, I've given him some love uh, in our FFPC draft. He was one of the guys that we took in, in that post 10th round area. Um, and I, I, he's a guy that I'm targeting in that area. I think he's he had a great stretch at the end of the season. There's not too many people who had a better last six games of the season really coming on. And now you get a little bit more diverse group in the wide receiver room there. We get Sammy and, and you know, Bateman's going to miss a little time, but you still have Mark Andrews. You got Tylan, you got DeVernay. So they, they finally have a, you know, a, a competent seeming room here and, and allow Hollywood to move around and shake free on some coverage. And, and he didn't even need any help last year by the end of the season. So I like, I like grabbing Hollywood Brown here uh, late. It's a fun, exciting Turf. swing. It's Stuff a swing for the fences. Right. I mean, cause he can, he can make your day in one play and, right. It's looking like there might be some more there for him as well to maybe boost up that floor. We'll see how it shakes out, but he's not expensive. Right. And he's got the talent and the draft capital. Exactly. And- that's And I was just about to say, that's the kind of guys that I like to try to pounce on when they were high-end rookie draft picks and in the NFL draft picks who have people... I didn't want anything to do with Hollywood Brown in the rookie draft. It's too I expensive. Said, Pass. Too yeah. expensive. No way. Now, give me all that Hollywood Brown. Let me right. get that. Right. Um, because for there, if he rebounds, there will probably be people who, oh, I, I like all. Yeah, Hollywood right, Brown. Yeah, right. yeah. Same then, thing with Miko, who I think is on right. this list. So. And, uh, and, and draft capital is there as well. Not that he needs the draft capital to say he needs to get more opportunities because he has produced uh, in, in bunches here. So, And we're going to talk more about Logan Thomas on another video, but I can't stress enough how big of a value Logan <laughs> Thomas is, Love especially it. inside back, in baby. premium. Get, Double get, back. Had to. Um, another guy, but you know, these guys are really close in ADP here and, and we took them back to back in our FFPC league. We're um, going in order of ADP. Right. So Corey Davis is at 115. We drafted Corey Davis in the FFPC that we just finished up. That's kind of spurred some of these videos. Um, and if you watch the preseason game, that those, that first couple of drive with Zach Wilson and CD Pepper. absolutely peppered them. Things were hot and heavy. Yeah. It was like, uh, the, the episode of Seinfeld with, with Elaine and the, and the saxophone player jake jarmel yeah yeah i mean i was already leaning cd over most of these dudes but then i mean give me one strong preseason game and i'm ready to yeah. sell the farm like that he was just looking his way even when he wasn't open even when passes were going incomplete he was just locked on to Corey davis we weren't sure who he was going to lock on to pretty evident he was locked on to Corey davis yeah and that's fantastic for the cheap Hey. Corey Davis that you could have already acquired and still can. Again, high draft capital, 
guy that I liked. Um, I paid for Corey Davis. Sure. God uh, damn. Just a, a, still you know, hanging on though. Wrapping up the Seinfeld analogy. Jake Jarmel was a guy who was on the way up. Uh, he was really crushing it. And then uh, he went and ate the box and couldn't play the saxophone anymore. Lips were all messed up. So let's hope Corey Davis is, it wasn't a non-eater and goes to be in the eater and, and screws this up. But all right. Got a little graphic there. Yeah. Just had to tie some things together. Loose ends. Fair. Um, all right. Bob Tanyan, big Bobby T mm. as I like to call him. Great value here. Um, now this is probably pre Aaron. Ro- no, this is August ADP. Sh- sh- yeah. Should, should, should be tied into there again. We're going to get into some more Bobby Tanyan and, and some Logan Thomas. So we don't want to spend too much time here. Go ahead and subscribe for that video. Uh, <laughs> pop it right up there. Uh, so me Cole, like you said, on the list at one twenty here. Um, just a home run cut. Absolutely a home run cut. Again, the same vein as, as the uh, Hollywood, Hollywood, like you were saying. Uh, I didn't want anything to do with him in the actual draft, but now here he is. A lot of upside. Uh, and he retraded up for him. Um, and, you know, now he's in the league. I've, I've actually heard uh, some some a, a, a press conference a few weeks ago with Tyron Matthew saying, you know, the, one of the things he's most proud of, Patrick Mahomes' development this year that could make things even more difficult for teams was that – there, he's not just looking at Kelsey and Tyreek. Like they're, 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 you know, obviously those guys are awesome, and it was impossible to stop those guys, even though you knew he was going that way. But if he could just spread it out just a little bit more, uh, Miko could greatly benefit from that. Right, and he's listed as number two on the depth chart there, so should get plenty of playing time. I think he did have a pretty bad drop in that preseason game, but whatever. Let's let's keep it moving. I'm, I'm upset with myself with the with the Seinfeld retie and should have left it alone. <laughs> Um, all right, so Gabe Davis, 126. Gabriel. Gabriel Davis. Hot and heavy again. People were loving some Gabe Davis. Left for dead now. Left for not, dead not now. Not quite dead, but he's Manny struggling. Sanders goes there. Nobody cares about him any year. Like Manny Sanders. I love Manny Sanders. We drafted Manny Sanders at the end of that FFPC draft. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Cole. He could miss some games because he's on, uh, on a stance of his own. We're not going to get into that. Uh, but, you know, Manny's only going to be there for a year, and Manny could easily have fallen off a cliff halfway through the season. Like, we don't know what's going to happen. He Simmons I, I, is old. I still want the Gabe Davis, um, and I like that the value, the bottom, hopefully fell out, and I feel like maybe this ADP is a little higher than where I've seen him uh, go in, in a lot of the mocks that we've done. For sure. I mean, the next three dudes at least are going ahead of him and every time I've – I mean – I don't think Gabe Davis is getting drafted in these fourteen round mocks that we've been doing. So, well, certainly not in redraft, but no, but even yeah. when we were doing the startup mocks, I don't yeah, we think. were doing twenty rounds then for the most part. Mm, I think we did fourteen. Eighteen was the least amount we did. Mm. Yeah, well, you the, set the, them up. The redrafts have been uh, the fourteen rounders. But they were like twelve. Who cares? Yeah. Subscribe. We're doing them every week. Right. You're right. Uh, so then, Brian Edwards. Um, right, man, that's a guy. 130 ADP that's, here. It's too cheap. He's getting some hype. Yeah, just forgotten man. Uh, you know, maybe maybe he sucks. I don't think so. I think he's really strong. Missed a lot of time last year. They Who are they going to throw it to? Although right. They got know, rid of Aguilar. Some, some hype for uh, your boy Renfro today. Just absolutely eating. Uh, who's, the, who's the Rams star corner there? What's his name? Ramsey? Ramsey. Just said, they said they couldn't guard him. Shut just, up. I, I swear to God. Just <laughs> ate his lunch today. <laughs> Just beasted him. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Um, so Brian Edwards is a guy who I've been trying to buy in all formats for sure. Uh, definitely want to grab him. Uh, next guy up on the board, Gus Edwards. You know, just running backs are few and far between. I think this is a great running back value at 134. Um, right, a little standalone-ish value and some massive upside if anything were to happen to J.K. Dobbins. Right, and, and yeah, like you said, the standalone is probably there as well. Probably Which get is a bummer run. for J.K., right? It's a little, it's it's what Gus stands in the way of J.K. being like the first guy I want to take out of the sophomore well, running backs. If, if, I mean, Not the first guy if, or Clyde. If, the first guy to take <laughs> I mean, he could be a top five guy if if they would if he would be a little more workhorsey if they would commit a little workhorsey more yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so marv let's get to marv jones here Ooh, yes uh we've been forever a marv jones supporting podcast he's won me some money mm-hmm. uh you know went to the jaguars kind of almost forgot about him a little bit and then boom you pop on the tape and 
he might be blowing up some people's plans for some other Jaguars wide receivers because T Law was looking at that man like he was one of his lovers. Yeah, I think both third down conversions went to Just, Lamar for big gains. Yeah. Like, he was like, oh, this is my guy. He's mm-hmm. going to be where he's supposed to be, and he's going to get it. Right. He's tall. He's <laughs> fast, and he's where he's yeah. supposed to fucking be. Wiley Vet. Yeah. Uh, so a so, uh, little little early love for love love boat connection there for, for Marv and T-Law. Um, then Komet. I've been trying to scoop him up in every draft I can, especially tight end premium. Uh, he had a nice little run at the end of the season. Again, uh, not a whole lot of targets to go around. Big physical guy. That team has been looking for a tight end presence for as long as Nagy's been the coach there. Wants it, needs it. Um, I mean, Jimmy Graham had like eight tutties last year, right. the last two years. It's and a shell of himself. Watching that preseason game, they were basically saying Jimmy Graham didn't retire because he likes Cole Komet so much and wants to help him get to that next level essentially there's probably some money involved as well um but that that was in the broadcast no it's all about cole Kmet. but it was it was reassuring to you know probably not going to play a whole lot and going to help his man out probably get a couple mil so um then paris you know we talked about paris on the last video we're always talking about paris i'll take a night in paris you take a night in paris two r's double r that's why I couldn't. That's why we love him. him. We, that's why we love him so much. Yeah, throw there, four, throw, throw right. four. Let me get a third there. one. Yeah, yeah, there, third one. Right. <laughs> um, so then uh, you got another guy who uh, was was just absolutely lo- probably the best wide receiver most yards of the preseason so far. KJ Hamler. Uh, now there's a lot of studs on this team. A lot of mouths this, to feed. A lot of mouths to feed over there, and we don't know what the quarterback situation is. But Locke looked semi competent. It's preseason. Take it for what it is. But we at least know that if the backup plan is Teddy Bridgewater, he can facilitate. It's not going to be risky. It's not going to be sexy. But he could get the he can get you get down the field, convert, uh, and do a couple different things and support some uh, some receivers. And, you know, K.J. Hamler at 176 right now, uh, elite athleticism. And I, I really like the player. I, I drafted him a decent amount last year as a rookie because he was a third round guy. Just kept falling because. And, you know, and he was a second round pick, I believe. So. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just just gives that team a little bit of something that they don't have between, you know, Judy is fast and Sutton's big and, and not slow at all either. Uh, but gives them something a little different there. And, and KJ was just electric out there in the first game of the preseason. And and uh, we, we, we selected him in the FFPC draft. Uh, so super late. Uh, so love that. I mean, he's just a really talented dude and his value could shoot up and he's super cheap. You can yeah. get him at the end of a draft. Like it's, these are, these are it's like that old Carolina on the list. commercial. Big black class, yeah. lightning fast. Big black cats. <laughs> <laughs> he made it to the TV, man. He made it to a TV commercial. He, he, he got it. He got on there. Hmm. Uh, all right. So T.Y. Hilton, 183, uh, Wiley vet there. Uh, probably could be a know, league wiener. Absolutely could be a league wiener. Um, he Donovan, was catching fire at the end of the season. If he, he was. I mean, that was with Phil Riv. Yeah, he could. He could with a, with a big arm in there. You never know what could happen with T.Y. Wentz is uh, reports are well on Wentz. Like, like he's it, like looking it. towards a return. He probably should settle down. Probably. Just relax. Just relax. I need to get that Aaron Rodgers sound bite. Just relax. Be, relax. All high up. Uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. Just it's only a matter of time for Dell gets hurt his again. His name gets is, is in everybody's mouth. Big physical guy. Uh, we talked about the lack of Michigan guys being able to flourish at Michigan. He's another one of those ridiculous, freaky guys. Um, and it's just looking really, really strong out there. I think they're going to struggle to keep him off the field. Uh, the OG Higgins, who's been, you know, holding down that third spot for a long time. Uh, I think it's people Jones is going to move into there and they're, they're not going to be upset when they need to move on from either Odell or Landry to have that guy filling in. Uh, so, you know, 194 right now for people's Jones, send out some trades, try to get them on your team and just throw them down at the bottom. Love it. Um, here we go. Donald Parham, Parham, Parham. You not a, way down in the ADP. Not 100% on how to pronounce his name. He's at 262. He's a tight end for the Chargers. I uh, believe he was in the XFL the year before that. Just a big, strong, fast, physical guy. Um, had a couple of decent blurbs here. I really like. They don't really have a whole lot of tight end competition over there. There's Jared Cook, um, and then there's this guy who could be uh, a real problem for defenses. We saw him out there a couple of times having some success last year. I have him on every single uh, yeah. roster that I have. Uh, I bought him at the end of last year and stuck him down there. And I, you know, one of my favorite uh, stabs going right now. 
Yeah, got to get pair him. He's ADP 262, so that's that's not free. Even, that's free. Uh, another guy, Tyree Jackson here, converted quarterback from Buffalo. Um, didn't make it as a quarterback, but on the tight end, uh, was that reported absolutely doing some work in Eagles camp, uh, but today got a little bit of a bummer back surgery, uh, so he might be out for a while, but silver lining and all that. Now you can get him and throw him on the IR spot. Doesn't count against your uh, against your total, your team total there. So I like it. You know, I, I like what's going on there. Big, physical, strong guy. Um, and and all, all reports were good in the, in the Logan Thomas vein there. Uh, so I like the Tyree Jackson, a little bit of a bummer today. Then Quez Watkins staying in the Eagles. Uh, absolutely, you know, you saw the gas that that man can produce uh, in that first preseason game. Just hit that second gear and was gone. Uh, I didn't see it. I put out a tweet that, you know, what would be more Philadelphia Eagles than Quez Watkins being greater than Jalen Rager. Mm. Um, Got some love on that. Did did get a little bit of love, but you know, not, not that I'm not, I don't think, I think Rager's good. I just thought you got a little bit of life pumped back into him. He sure did. (laughs) Um, Made a one handed catch. Yeah. That's all it takes these days. with the Fucking kids. Yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) Oh, 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 he made one handed catch. That was good. Uh, so Quez, you know, nice little shot in the dark there at 249 ADP. Um, and then a guy that, that I've two guys that I should have had higher up here because we were going in numerical order. Uh, Marquez Calloway for the uh, Saints getting good reports. And who the hell do they have to throw the ball to? Traquan's missed a bunch of time. Uh, so they don't really have anybody else to throw the ball to. Uh, so I've, I've grabbed him in a couple spots where there was rookie drafts where uh, you can draft other guys. He was on some waiver wires. I was able to scrap. Uh, grab him and then Denzel Mims I know you know at lo- everyone's whipping post right now they hate him uh, but I know, didn't realize he had something he lost a bunch of weight and yeah he some had some crazy, crazy thing happened in the offseason had to, uh, lost 20 pounds or something yeah. couldn't like so I'm like oh that was encouraged I was like I'm it sucks for him, but it was encouraging as like a reason of why he's getting sh- right. so shit on with, with like running with the threes and was the sixth wide receiver to yeah. play off the and and you team. know he got drifted drafted by a different regime for a different purpose than kind of what this regime now is on the more 49ers where it's more precise West Coast stuff details and in, in route running and all that stuff which was never really Mim's strong suit Mim's a, a big physical guy who you know can win in a contested catch and can super can take fast. a slant all the way but wasn't you know super dialed in and precise on those things so they said he's been working hard staying after practice all things looking positive for Mims that ADP is probably going to continue to go down um, and I'll take a I'll take another swing on Mims whatever I mean love the talent it's way too early to give up on basically any rookie at this point that there was a rookie it's 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 too early to give up on a second year player right especially if you like them right and, then, and you, you know you can get discouraged but you know they brought a bunch of new regime came in they brought in a bunch of guys they liked uh, but, uh, you know, Mims went out there, got three for 53 in, uh, in in preseason there. Didn't look bad. So, you know, let's go Mims. Take let's some Mims. Mims. And Mims. need a bounce back. For last Mims. but not least, before we get to the rookies, I think De- my man Devin Funches just needs a, a little Ooh. tip of the cap because my man was out there with Jordan Love just snagging shit. Plucking balls just yeah. out of the air, out of his frame. That was always kind of his issue was some some stone hands here and there, but it didn't look like an issue the nah, other night. He looked, he looked like looked a freak. primed and ready to go, man. He and then could give that that offense a much needed second target. We 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 think there could be something with Lazard. MVS is a field stretcher. That's probably all he's really ever going to be at this point. We've been waiting long enough. Amari Rodgers is a rookie. They brought Randall Cobb in. We don't know what he's got, you know. So Either they have Bob Tunyon, which Big Bobby T, but Funches could give them a little boost. And he wasn't listed on the ADP because Nobody's, he was thinking about Funches right now. Yeah, but, opted out for COVID. Yeah, so Funches, baby. Love All right. that. So we gave you a nice mix of guys there. And now I want to give you some some cheaper rookies that are that are hanging on here. You know, so you can get a, you know, you shouldn't just be drafting a bunch of old veterans or these guys. You should mix in through these later rounds. If you were drafting here, you should get some rookies that you want to take some shots on and mix it in with those guys. So here's some rookies for you. We talked about St. Brown in the next show. We're going to talk St. Brown in the next show. And we're going to talk St. Brown in the next show. (laughs) We're going to talk St. Brown again. St. Brown leads the rookies off at 148. Uh, Go ahead and get yourself some St. Brown. That's a rookie I'm targeting later. Uh, Then Kenny Gainwell, uh, 
looked decent in his, and now getting some he more positivity. He kept Antonio Gibson off the field in Memphis, now, right? And he looked good in his preseason debut. Now getting more positivity, mixing, mixing in with the ones a little more. I think they like what they have in Gainwell, and, and he can do all sorts of things. Elite receiver uh, as far as the running back position receiver goes. Um, and, you know, I really like taking the shot on Gainwell. He's plenty cheap enough to take a shot where I feel good about his ADP rebound, even if he, you know, I think he can be pretty good and he could be, he could be really good. It right. Just, and he could be the future. Uh, I don't know. He's not, he's not a workhorse type back, but he could, he could really be a big piece of their future, yeah. you know, because Boston Scott's not going to be there forever. They continuously just throw shade at Sanders and his contract's got to be coming up soon. They don't have a fifth year option on him. So it's like, maybe you don't love Kenny Gainwell this year. Maybe he gets you 10 points a game, right. you know, which right. would be pretty strong. Right. And be then great at that 157. And then he can, he's very a bit possible. of a game breaker and, and, and a good player. I mean, his value can go up for sure. Yeah. And even if it doesn't, I'm fine. Like if I can get a 10, 12 point a game guy for at career stage, somewhere yeah. around there, fuck yeah. Fuck um, yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Uh, we got Palmer here at 170. So a little Chargers action. You know, we talked about him in the last rookie show as well. Caught some balls uh, in the week ones. No one was balls. guarding him. They didn't play any starters. Uh, they're, yeah. they're not going to do that. Uh, they're not They're not down with that. Uh, but, you know, guy that we're targeting right now at 170. Sure, why not? And then we're getting in. Now we're getting into the super duper cheap guys. Kylan Hill, mm. uh, 258. Ooh, that's going up. Everybody baby. needs a running back. You know, caught a little screen, turned on the Jets, made some dudes miss, looked good running the ball. I mean, you can just tell from the, the, the speed that he has on the on the return. Right. You know, like they got him returning kicks. Yeah. He's electric, man. I didn't know he was that electric. Like, yeah. we, we scouted him, but good, I didn't know he... Good pass catcher. And I, we were really hoping he would land somewhere else to be able to get a, a better chance at a job. But all it takes is a hamstring or, or right. you know, or something silly to happen. And, and he might have been a little nicked at the end of that game. He did limp off. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Kylan Hill. But I'm grabbing him every chance I can get. Uh, Hunter Long, tight end premium, uh, was probably my second favorite tight end in the draft process. Uh, he had a little, he's got a little injury, so he might miss a, uh, an extended period of time here, but I'm definitely trying to grab him. He was, you know, reportedly already turning heads. Um, and then we got Jacob Harris, another tight end, uh, tight must, end premium, must grab scoop. him just all upside with, with Harris here at 233 ADP. I think every single fourth round pick of a rookie draft that I've had, I, I used, I took Harris. Jacob Harris. <laughs> Let's make him sound exotic. Um, <laughs> Because he is Roundtree, two fifty two. He had a nice uh, first preseason game. He had he, decent career over there at Missouri. So just we're talking about running backs that you can stab on right now. Roundtree, right there. Uh, Noah Gray, uh, obviously, you know, getting some respect. People are, are, you know, if you're on if you're on the Chiefs, getting some respect. Talk, get, got a little two tight end blurb there in the beginning of summer. Maybe Noah Gray could come along, be two tight ends for him. Why not take the stab on him? Kelsey's not going to live forever. Um, and we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm down with it. And then Granson for the Colts, another tight end premium guy that if I'm in that position, I'm, I'm snapping up tight ends late in these drafts as many as I can see if I can get somebody to catch fire here and a lot, a lot of buzz around him. Frank Wright loves that tight end. Oh, for sure. We've and they, they don't that. have one right now. Like right. Jack Doyle's been inconsistent, hurt. Mo Ali Cox, you know, take him for what he is. They tried Trey Burton. He couldn't stay healthy. So they're looking for somebody and, and maybe Granson's the answer here. Um, Jarrett Patterson uh, was a was a horse up at Buffalo and then came in here. I don't even he might have been undrafted or, or super late draft pick for this for the Redskins here. He had a nice little debut in, in, in preseason. He's at 248. Um, so I think he could stick around on that team. Um, and then Chris Evans out of Michigan, another one of those Michigan guys. Uh, he had a nice receiving day uh, in his preseason debut. So another running back to take a shot on late in the draft young guy who could maybe carve out a, a role behind right. Mixon, who hasn't been the healthiest guy. Not He's not. He's competing with uh, our boy Samaje. Samaje and, and our boy... Uh, oh, I can't uh, think of his dang name. Me neither. T. Ty Williams. Right. <laughs> That's Ty what I'm going with. Travion. Travion. Whew. Yeah. Got it. Um, and then, so then we got Tylon Wallace, who I couldn't find his ADP, but let me get him for sure. Ton yeah. of talent there. Uh, that guy was was trending as a first or second round pick before he tore his ACL at 19. Uh, so there's a lot of talent there. He could be a little buried, but you saw just as quickly as he was buried, Bateman's out and and uh, Marquise is no Marquise stranger is to there, the so. uh, injury designations. Um, and then we got you know three more guys here. We got Tommy Tremble, who 
tight end premium again going to take that uh stab he's going to be a good blocker so he can get on the field and then he's he's got un, un, untapped potential in the athleticism department uh and then going to be on that carolina panthers team so let me get that uh with with brady and uh What's what's my man's name? Joe Brady and Matt Rule. Matt Rule. And then we're gonna get Strachan, Strakan. We're gonna get him another drop here as a rookie. You should be scooping him up as Stretch. much as you can. Uh, if you didn't watch the last show, he's uh he's a rookie for the Colts. Looked great in his preseason debut, about six five, two twenty something out of Charleston Southern. Uh, after I saw him out on the field doing his thing, went and did a little research on him, been getting great reviews in uh through the through the press in uh, practices. Uh, so you know, TY's long in the tooth. Paris hasn't necessarily been on the field a ton, and, and the rest of that receiving core is wide open, in my opinion. So, uh, Strakan, Strakan, Michael, grab him. Grab my man, scoop him up, put him on the squad. And then last but not least, Shy Smith. If Big Co was here, he'd be excited about this. A Gamecock. Um, he's on the Panthers. Uh, he had a decent career over there in, in Carolina. He's, he's a gritty guy, and, and uh, if you watch the broadcast, Steve Smith was a big Shy Smith fan, said, you know, if he can – he can keep his things together here he, he's got a real chance uh to, to make an impact eventually on, on a team there so super duper late shy smith probably gonna be on a lot of waiver wires undrafted deep deep bench throw him on a, on a deep taxi or something i like it it was a strong list case all right well let's get out of here be sure to subscribe that bob tunyon that logan thomas video coming at you next we got the re, uh cheap uh positional rooms positional rooms and live mocks and uh, all sorts of stuff so we'll appreciate catch you, on the next you one. guys we'll see you next time peace <laughs>